Steve, welcome to my shop and to Furniture Wood Stuff. Uh, on this week's show, it's a new month and it's the first Tuesday, so it's a tool review. On this month's tool review, we're going to be looking at my wood lathe. And if Carlsberg made wood lathes, they wouldn't be making this one. So I bought this lathe in the region of 20 years ago, maybe 25, maybe 3, I'm not quite sure. And it came as a package. What you see here, uh, plus a number of tools. So there's three spindle gouge, gouges, sort of an inch. Five eighths and a three eighths. Two dreaded skews, uh, an inch. Uh, and the other one was a uh, half inch, but I repurposed uh, that as a, a square scraper. Round nose scraper, half inch, uh, pointy tool, not quite sure this is for chamfering I guess. A half inch and a, uh, a parting tool, diamond parting tool. They're not the best, but they're functional. Also came with uh, two tool rests. Small six inch and a, a larger twelve inch. Face plate, a four and a quarter inches, I don't know that's a particular size. You turn it. Uh, drive centre and a, a running centre. It's a number one Morse taper. It's 240 volts. 13 amp plug. The motor is 370 watts, so it's about half a horsepower. In terms of changing the spindle speed, it's obviously it's the belt. So you undo this little screw. There is no micro switches on it, so you always make sure it's switched off. And then to change it, you basically pull the motor forward and then slip your belt. The pullers give you uh, five speeds from 475 to uh, 3260 rpm. And it actually gives you some guidance down here in terms of uh, rpm to use whilst you're either spindle turning or face plate turning. It's belt drive. Uh, NVR switch, uh, which I had to replace the original one went kaput. So once you've actually adjusted the belts, there's no uh, micro switches or anything on here. You have to put the wee bolt back in. I think you can do outboard turning it on it as well, but not no idea what you how you do that. Uh, but it comes through. It's got a left hand thread of the same pitch. I tend just to keep that cap on it to be honest. There's a spindle lock here. That's unlocked. And that's locked so when you're uh, putting face plates on and the like. I've no idea why there's a nut on. I tend to take it off. If there's anybody who's watching says the reason for having that nut, I'd be uh, 
most interested. This is broke. So it, <laughs> it comes out. Not figured out how to uh, how it's held, so I just tend to put it in and uh, take it out. And it sounds like this when it's going. Between centres it's uh, 37 inch or uh, 940 millimetres uh, and the swing is 12 inch or 305 millimetres. The bed is a, a bar or a, actually it's a tube. About 60, million, 60 millimetres or sort of 2 and 3 sixteenths something like that in diameter. simply just screw down uh, on some blocks and then blocks are then screwed uh, to this workstation that I made. The banjo is in uh, two pieces. We've got a, a sliding bed over the bar and then you've got this that can move, move in and out. Tail stocks slides on the bar. And then you've got this uh, wheel that pushes the quill out. Or two inch. Just so it's two inch of quill movement. see the centres. I'll zoom in a bit. Put the centres in. There's a little bit of misalignment. But there's a little uh, grub screw around the back you can adjust to get it about right. The tools are stored in these racks that are uh, homemade. So addition to these tools, I got a bull gouge bought me for my birthday a few years ago. That's from Axminster. <laughs> of course, the safety shield's always here. Got a bull gouge was bought me for my birthday a few years ago uh, and a roughing gouge, I think it's a one inch roughing gouge I also got a, an eBay find buy of uh, some carbide tip tools or scrapers the diamond one, the sycamore handle or somebody like that somewhere, I'm sure. So I'm, I'm sure you, some of the guys that I did, there's a square one, a bit rounded, uh, and then a round one. We also got a uh, slim parting tool. I got that at uh, the wood show in November of last year. And they all live there. Also on the lay station is the uh, my grinding station for it, a whetstone grinder, which is a, a park side. Is made by Grizzly. I've got a wet grinding stone and a dry one. It's within easy reach. I've got an independent four jaw chuck that I bought for it. And I, I lived with that for uh, quite a long while. And then I, uh, I treated myself 
and built a uh, four inch chuck system from Rutland's. Also, usual supply of sealers, lacquers, creams, waxes, and uh, abrasive strips and Yorkshire grit. The wood turner's abrasive paste. So that's my uh, wood lathe. It's a uh, Clark 37 inch wood lathe, model number CWL 12D. I guess you don't make this anymore. Uh, and I wouldn't recommend it, but it does a, a functional job for me in terms of helping me turn knobs and dowels and the like. Usual likes and dislikes will be following this. Thanks for watching. Any questions? Fire away. Happy woodworking. Got to say that this actually spent a good few years just in a box, and I never used it. I never uh, really got got to love it. Uh, so I don't do much turning. Probably that's why. And in fact, probably it'll be one of my next major machine purchases to uh, replace this.